Hi everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Jordana and I'm the early RAF educator in the South Bronx. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm super excited that we are doing a poetry workshop today since we have maybe some extra time and could use some writing. Um, we have a special guest today who is talking to us all the way from Shanghai. He was a poet, who lived in New York City. Over to you. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I really love all the work you do, Jordana. And my name is Jinjin, Jin, and I, should I just introduce myself? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I have been writing poetry um, for a while, and I also write fiction and try to make some films as well. Um, and I think my work is mostly hybrid. I think all of these different mediums come together. And I love thinking about things not as static within one medium, but all like playing with each other. Mm. So cool. Oh my gosh, I'm inspired already. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you before we get started kind of doing some, doing some writing. Um, when, when did you start writing? How did that begin for you? Uh, I think I've always loved reading. I think of myself more, probably as a lot of um, kids in elementary school, like the kind of kids who love staying in the library during recess, you know, who just like love hiding behind books. I think I never thought of myself as a writer until teachers begin encouraging me to take it seriously. And even then it was hard to think of myself as a writer, like what does that mean? But I mean, for my whole life, I've always been a reader. And um, I think when I read a really, really good book that you just resonate with so much, I think, I think to myself, like this is just the thing I wanna do, you know? Like I, the only thing I really, really want in my life is to like be able to write like that or be able to continue that story. Yeah. What would you say to someone who's trying to write but feels stuck? Like they can't quite get their words out. How do you handle that? I think almost the same answer to what I just said. Like I think I read it usually until I want to start writing. Um, and sometimes it doesn't happen and I say that's okay. Like I think I don't want there to be that pressure to like be productive all the time, to keep writing all the time, even though I do want to have a practice to give myself time and space every morning, just to train myself to like sit with a blank page and like be okay with that. But also just give myself time, like 30 minutes every morning to like try to write. If it doesn't come, then it's okay. Then I'll read, do something else and just like let life happen. And like, sometimes I'll just, read until I do want to write something. But I think being, there's a balance between having a practice and forcing yourself to write when you don't really want to. Yeah, totally. I've definitely found kind of during the pandemic and spending a lot of time inside that, for me, I really need this writing practice um, mm. as like a, you know, just keeping track of time because time can feel so strange when you're always inside or with family. Um, yeah, yeah. Has it shifted your writing practice at all? Yeah, um, I think it has really made me reflect on what writing means to me. And in one sense, it made me uncomfortable to think about like art and writing when like things are so terrible and bad for most people right now. Mm -hmm. um, and but and then I'm like, oh, here's my poem. You know, it feels kind of sickening to think that, but. But and disorienting, but at the same time, it's also, on the other hand, made me feel just how important it is to me to keep writing. Um, I know it sounds a little paradoxical, but it's only made me realize, um, I think it's important to acknowledge the sickening feeling, but also to realize like I, the thing most important to me is to be able to escape in my writing and just to have like that practice and how healing it can be and how grounded I feel whenever I do write. Yeah, totally. I definitely have found myself, um, you know, with writing, there's this whole world that I can have access to, you mm -hmm. know, where I am. Yeah. And it's a simple yeah. paper, which is so, such a relief, I think, 
when when yeah. you arrive. Um, yeah, I just escape for a few hours. <laughs> I've been like returning to all my books that I sort of used to read but haven't read in a long time. Um, yeah, I've been reading a lot of Harry Potter, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> Are there any books that you sort of hold particularly close that you really love? <laughs> like my my um, honest answer could be Harry Potter, but I could also give a more <laughs> like, because it's just so comforting, you know? You're just like, okay, let me do this literal escapism. Like, <laughs> it's true. Let me just go on that adventure. <laughs> and you, and it's especially comforting when like you, um, you already know the story like reading a new book right now feels hard because you're you don't know what's going to happen and that's scary because that's how the, scary the world is so any familiar books any old books that already hold dear feels good to me mm -hmm. but i mean another more i guess literary <laughs> or older <laughs> after harry potter answer could be um i think ocean Wands book has always meant so much to me um <laughs> Ocean Wong's book, Night Sky with Exit Wounds. It's a little poetry collection that's probably one of the first, um, it came out in 2017 or 16, and it was like one of the first poetry collections that I read all the way through because it was just so raw and so vulnerable. And he just, he doesn't pretend he's writing poetry. He's just like letting you be there with him. Um, I really get that, the post Harry Potter book loves <laughs> for me the crowd is always <laughs> very cool I'm never too old for it for you um yeah I just I know I've been really deeply in my Harry Potter and like magical books I think um yeah so I was wondering if you would lead me and and maybe us maybe other people are joining in um in a writing prompt um, yeah awesome Thank you. Uh, one of my favorite favorite prompts i think is especially appropriate for this moment when we can see the sun shining outside and but we we shouldn't we can't go outside right now but we are still experiencing the weather or a longing for this weather in indoors so i want you to think of your favorite or least favorite season, just choose a season that you want to describe and write a poem describing it or describing a memory from it or not even directly describing it, just writing about it, something about that season, but without using any of the seasonal keywords. So if you're writing about winter, you shouldn't write about snow or frost or cold, like things that would give away, um, signify it easily that the or symbolize the season to the readers and then you I would if we're all together I want you to read the poem to someone and let them guess what the season is mm, oh my gosh I love this this is my line for you okay a soft breeze on a clear day like a hand helping me down the stairs, or crisply teasing, or gently holding. Oh, <laughs> it could be either spring or, or autumn, but I think I'm gonna say autumn. You're right. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank I you, felt that's so nice. Held. I felt held by the wind. <laughs> okay, mine is... <laughs> Fresh pink peach, fuzzy and dripping from my mere touch. I dream about it all year. Is it summer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't know if you were, if there was going to be another, like. I know, I, I kind of tried to throw you off. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Thank you so much, Jinjin, for sharing, for sharing your poetry um, with me and with yeah. us. It's yeah, such thank you for having me. I hope you enjoy the exercise. Um, if you are interested in doing this exercise, all the information is in the description as well. All right. Bye, y'all. See you all soon.